Okay, now once we've plugged in the AC power supply to the wall socket, it's time to just test the motor. We discussed earlier the main power switch at the back of the controller. Look at the drive wheel. As you engage the power, it momentarily turns, and that's a correct function. Next step is switch on the main power at the front and assure that the motor is turning quietly, smoothly. And now the next step is to position the motor. It's a rim drive table. Positioning is fairly critical and very simple. Move the platter, the motor into the platter until it gains traction gently. Push down firmly. Platter's turning. Next thing to do is to put your finger underneath the platter gently and make sure there's torque there. If it if it doesn't continue turning, then the motor is coupled loosely. We're going to have a more detailed video on the setup of the motor, but it's about that simple. The next step is to shut the power off. Now that the motor is in place, check our level. The level is good. If you need to adjust it again, just unscrew the collars, adjust the point. But it's always the best idea to make sure everything's level before you install the motor. Okay, once the motor has been running for 10 to 15 minutes, just let it on and let it run for a while. Settle into place. Power down. We'll need a speed strobe. To do the final speed setting. This is from CAB, www.cabusa.com. Take the strobe out, place it on the platter. Main power is on the back, and the power on the front. The switch is in the far left position for 33, and the right position for 45. Pick the strobe up, check your 33, and carefully just dial until the speed is absolutely perfect. At this point, we'd like to let the turn table run for another 15 minutes and check the speed again. Okay, we've had the table running for 15 minutes, half an hour, longer the better helps break and settle things in. The next step is to set the tone arm up. Switch the main power off. In this case we're going to be using the 12 inch Jalco. That's an option with the gem turntable. So roughly set the tone arm in position. This is a remote tone arm base. A lot of questions on how the base works. It's isolated from the main assembly the rotating assembly, the motor, and the tone arm are separated for quietness. The base has a very deeply inset o-ring which provides very stable coupling with a very heavy base. All the fixtures included to set up each tone arm. Take the mounting template, it's just the ruler that comes with the Jalco. This is an example of a setup, there's many different ways to actually achieve this. Set it on the top, spindle, slide it over, move the tone arm, pi eye to the center point, in this case 290 millimeters. Now the tone arm is rough positioned. After this we're going to use the setting gauge provided with the manufacturers or other tools you can buy to set the actual stylus position. One important thing to do again is to recheck the speed with the cab strobe or any strobe you happen to have. The speed is still dead accurate. Remove the strobe. Install our head shell.
record on. And in this case, we're going to use one of our famous outer rings. This is an 1150 gram outer ring. The table works with both 600 and 1150. The cab strobe we demonstrated can be factory installed on top of the setting disc for the outer ring, making speed checking really convenient. Install the outer ring. Center clamp. Fire up the turntable. Do your final adjustments and you're ready to play. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch the gem setup and many hours of enjoyment, many years. Thank you.